Hello and welcome to Theology and Tap. You know that most popular verse in the Bible that we as Christians use over and over again is John chapter 3 verse 16. Now in the near future I'm going to do a whole video on John 3 16 and pretty much the whole chapter when Jesus Christ have a little dialogue with Nicodemus. But today I want to focus just on the words eternal life. Now we use this verse as Christians to tell the world that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are going to have eternal life in heaven. But if you do not believe in Jesus, you're going to have eternal life in hell, which means you're going to perish. And I was taught this when I was growing up as a young boy, and I never questioned it. We just took it as heaven and hell. But as I got older, I started questioning it. Where in this context, as Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, is Jesus talking about hell or heaven? He's not. So what does the words eternal life mean? So the word forever doesn't necessarily mean afterlife. You're talking about forever in a sense that as long as we live. But as some Jewish writers have said, the word forever goes on the other direction. Not our future in paradise, but our future on earth. So even though I may die, my influence on earth continues on forever. Through the influence I, have, I gave to my children and they will give their influence to their children and friends and whatnot. So it goes down the other. Because earth will continue on and life will continue on whether I am here or not. So the word eternal life doesn't necessarily mean in paradise. In fact, I would disagree with that. And I'm going to tell you exactly why after I show you this video of Francis Chan giving an illustration of eternal life. Now, I watched this already. I'm going to react to it, but in a way that I'll let you know where I agree and which part that I would disagree. Now, imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on Earth. You've got a few short years here on Earth and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. Okay, I agree with that one. Cause life is short. <laughs> you know that, right? I am, I'm nearing my uh, 52 years of, of, of life on earth, and which means I, I, I live more than half of my life already. I'm going to be gone in the in next 30, 40 years. Hopefully I'll live that long. Um, I have to tell you, life is short. That is for certain. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about, you're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna save, 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 so I can really enjoy this part right here. All right, now, I agree within that part too, right? Because we do work hard. I mean, if you look at the way the world runs today, you start going to school when you're two years old, three years old, and you study and you learn. You go to school through elementary, middle school, high school, college, graduate school. And all you do is study, study, study. And you get a job and you become slave to a, 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 some kind of a work. And we retire at 70 or so. And we only got like 15 years left to spend whatever we save. I mean, that's really, really crazy, which is true. And you're consumed with that, and you're thinking, oh, man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about this? What about this? What about, th what about all this stuff? It's, just, it's crazy to me because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And, and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible, enjoying myself as much as I can? Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy. And I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God. Because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth. And it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this. And then comes eternity. And I'm not going to be fooled. I'm not going to spend my life down here. See, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid, because it's going to affect all of this. Man, I, I, I'm serious. 
I, I look. Okay, I'm going to end the illustration right there, and this is where I have a big problem. Now, he says that he's making the right decision, and some people may disagree with his decisions, and they're calling each other stupid, and, uh, you know, I don't know why we get into this position as a Christian where we just make everybody feel bad about the decisions they're making or how they're living. Why is that so important to us to say, hey, you're not living your life for God, you're making the wrong decision? It's not our life. Everybody has their own life and hopefully they have lived their life and, and it was influenced by good in this world and, and they're doing the best way they, they can. They don't need guilt. They don't need shame. We don't need that kind of stuff. So why does, why does always we make illustrations and sermons that make people feel that we're just no good? That, that really frustrates me. And we shouldn't be doing things like that. We should just preach Jesus and Him crucified so that we may have eternal life. Now, eternal life, as Francis seemed to say, is that big part of the rope, right? Millions and millions and millions of years. So we invest this one chance that we have in this life so that we could enjoy the million years. But do you ever notice that in Scripture, he doesn't talk about those millions and millions of years. You notice that? Jesus never talked about it. The only thing that we know for sure that he talked about was when he was being crucified, he looked at one of the uh, other people that was being, being crucified with him, he looked at one of them and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Now that pr pretty much is the only time where he actually talked about afterlife. And it's called paradise. But we don't live our life so that we could have a better life in paradise. I mean, like you think one person would enjoy paradise more than the other? I don't, I don't know if that is true because the Bible really doesn't talk about that stuff. But the kingdom of God, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, is not afterlife, but kingdom of God is here on earth earth. Go ahead and read all the parables that Jesus, Jesus uh, talked about, um, kingdom of God, all the illustration that he gives about kingdom of God. He gives it in a way that we would understand here on earth. This is what it matters. Now, I do agree with him that this life can be short, that we could die any minute, something could happen, that is true. And, but that's something that everybody knows. And we should appreciate that little time that we have here on earth. And the paradise, I think the Bible talks about it, so that we may not worry so much about afterlife. So we may know that there is something better that is coming. But that should encourage us to live the life today for the glory of God. Or whatever that we feel is the right thing to do as the Spirit of God encourages us to do. So when somebody makes a decision that I may disagree with, and I could tell people that I may disagree with it. But who am I to say that their decisions are stupid? Mine is correct. And I love how, you know, people say, you know, hey, if you want to invest in your life in paradise, which is millions and millions and millions of years in paradise, that's why you shouldn't so be so worried about money here on earth. And a lot of preachers say that. And I know Francis Chan talks about that. He believes poverty and not having a lot of money is a blessing from God. So if that is true, then why do churches always asking for money or donations and whatnot? Why? Because the church life here on earth matters, right? It matters a lot. How, where we live matters. The kind of car that we drive, it matters. Right? I, and what he's saying is what? It shouldn't matter if we're Christians? It makes no sense. And I think the reason why Christians and, and someone like Francis Chan and other preachers are like this is because they do not understand the word eternal life. Now, what does that mean, eternal life? Does it mean heaven? And if you believe it does mean heaven, why do you think so? Why? Because somebody told you? Um, I want to share with you this verse in the Bible. It comes to us on John chapter 17, verse 22 and 3. Now, listen to the Word of God, okay? Listen. Verse 2, even as you gave him authority, God gave him authority, Jesus, over all flesh, that to all, all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. All right? Eternal life. And verse 3 tells us what that eternal life is. But verse 3 says, uh, Jesus gives us an example. 
a, a, a definition of eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That is eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, that is eternal life. Now, does it say anything about heaven? Does it say anything about hell? Does it say anything about the millions and millions of years that we're going to live in heaven and whatnot? No. He's talking about this short life that we have here on earth. It is precious. It is important. And as we live our life here on earth, we should have eternal life. Because God is, 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 is eternal. We should have relationship with Him so that we may know Him the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have, God has sent, so we could have this fellowship and relationship with God, so that in this life, we could rejoice in the Lord, we could have abundance of life, and we could do things that can definitely help us, right? so we could rejoice in Him, and those around us, we could be a blessing to. So, if you really think about the words eternal life, the way we live here on earth, with God, that is what he's talking about. Not the millions and millions of years. We live our life here on earth with God to have fellowship with him. That's eternal life. And we have it today. So we should cherish it today. We should rejoice in it today. We should focus on life on earth because how we live our lives on earth is good. Not out of guilt because we're making the wrong decisions and, and somehow we're not being Christian enough. No more guilt, please. No more shame of how you live. God's Spirit is within you. And may God lead you and guide you in, your, in that path of your life. And whatever you believe that path may be, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and live it. Don't let anyone judge you, as the book of Galatians says, I believe it's in Galatians, by how you live your life. Because you have relationship with God, you have eternal life. Once again, it's about life on earth. Now, I do want to close this with a story. I had a, a friend in high school, um, church friend, and she was a little bit different back in the uh, 70s and 80s. She really didn't like her life. She hated her life, actually. So one day she committed suicide. And she left a note that actually said this. She said, this life sucks, and I want to be with Jesus in paradise. And so she took her life. And that's, that's a very tragic thing. That paradise was so attractive compared to this world, because that's what we teach. Millions and millions and millions of years of just blissful life. Of course, this life is going to suck compared to that. And she didn't like it, so she took her life. And what is interesting I thing is, as Francis Chan was talking about, um, if you believe in Jesus, you're going to go to heaven. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Right? That kind of understanding. So when I went to church and we were talking about our friend who committed suicide, some of the, Bible, the study groups got together and started talking about the uh, theology of suicide. And the teacher actually came out and said, well, if you take your own life, then you didn't have faith in Jesus, so she's going to spend eternity in hell. Her life is perished. And I was about 17 or 18 years old at the time, and even then I knew that was the worst thing you could say. It's not that it was too soon, but I disagreed so much, so much about that because life is not a test for us to see whether you, we're going to spend millions of years in, in heaven or hell it's not a test Jesus Christ gave his life so that we could have life and have it abundantly and that's eternal life and she should have known that she should have known that so I hope that you will look into the words eternal life and the word perish look in the words in Greek and also how it was used 2,000 years ago. Try and look into and see whether the words eternal life is something that, that was just words or it was theological term because I believe it was 2,000 years ago and Jews would have understood what it meant. So look into it before you decide what it really means or somebody else tells you what it is. Life is not a test so that we could go to millions of years in heaven or hell. Life is just life. 
You know, the Word of God says, as long as there is breath, let, let, let him praise the Lord. Life is precious, is wonderful, is great. And, and we should do whatever we feel is the right thing to do. And don't let anyone judge you, whatever decisions that you make. God bless you. May you have that eternal life because you know our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for joining in. Look forward to making that video on John uh, chapter 3 between Jesus and Nicodemus and many more videos to come. Keep checking back, please. Subscribe and share. Thanks a lot.